There's something about taking your print off the build plate and just using it with no assembly required. I don't know exactly what it is about it that's so satisfying. And there are so many great designs already out there which are both functional and to be used as man-child toys. So why not try to learn how to design and print your own and figure out why so many people have trouble printing them? I mean, how hard can it be, right? Stick around to find out. I've downloaded a couple of the highest rated print in place models from printables.com and I printed them on my Creality K1 to see how well they work. By the way, if you're a designer and you're not already on printables.com, you may want to check it out. If you have popular designs, you can be rewarded for your work. Before we see if the prints worked, I want to look inside the models to see if there are any special techniques being used. The first is this model, which keeps your cords organized, and it's a beautiful model designed by Squin. It looks carefully crafted, the knurling is exceptional, and this model has two moving parts, the hinge and the central shaft. So if we look at the hinge spacing measured parallel to the conical surfaces, it's set to 0.238 millimeters. And because it's a conical hinge, it can be printed to avoid supports and bridging, making this a print in place that should work right off the build plate. And if we look at the vertical surfaces, they are 0.2 millimeters apart, and if we look at the central shaft, it has a gap of 0.285 to 0.3 millimeters apart with chamfers to avoid any surfaces meeting while printing. So does this work right off the build plate? The answer is yes. Well, sort of. The hinge works, the shaft portion does not. And that's probably due to a little bit too much squish on that first layer. When we look at the model, it has no chamfer on the bottom edges, and that's where I had the problem. Even a 0.2 millimeter chamfer would help here. Also, compensating for elephant's foot in the slicer would help as well. I've also tested printing the version with the handle at the bottom, which is supposed to swing out, but it was too hard to print, and the hinge was too tight, and it locked when I tried to free it up, and the handle broke off. So what went right for this model was the extrusion calibration was close enough to get the gaps in the hinge where they were needed. Also, this is a fast printer and they can have trouble with cooling. So the top is off, the door is open, all the fans were turned up to max. This helps to prevent surfaces from bonding too well. The version that I printed of this model was the largest and it works like this. It's a nice model, not too hard to print with the right settings. The next model is a very, let's say, unique hinge. This one caught my eye because of the gearing. And there are some videos showing how much force these hinges can withstand. And for such a small plastic hinge, it's pretty impressive. This one was made by E. Soderberg. And there are lots of contact surfaces here to bond if things aren't quite right with the printer, the model, or the slicer. This one has tighter tolerances on the gears at 0.1 millimeters, which may be all right because they only come close towards the center. However, the center connecting rod has a little bit more space at 0.3 millimeters. And I think that's a good idea because if these were too tight, there'd be far more surface area to have to break free and it may not work. Again, at the bottom, there are no chamfers here where the connecting rod meets each geared side. So how does this model do right off the build plate? Aside from the tiny amount of supports added in a place I didn't expect, the model freed up well and it moves nice and smooth. The model is actually really stable considering that it only has the center connecting rod that holds the two parts together. Hinges are one of the most common types of models printed in place and that's probably a good place to start for our design. I happen to have something that's been broken for a long time and needs new hinges and it's a classic. It's none other than an original Coleman cooler. This cooler has hung around even though the hinges were broken long ago. I attempted to fix them with duct tape and that works all right. So let's breathe some new life back into this by creating some new print in place hinges. With all of that in mind, now we can design our own hinge. And the most important of course is clearance. A 0.3 millimeter gap seems to be the most common gap size I see. So to make something printable on nearly any printer with maybe not the ideal settings, I'll use 0.4 millimeters as the gap. And the gap size can shrink if we don't have as much contact area which can bond. We also need to make sure that the edges touching the build plate are chamfered on any motion parts. One other little detail I've noticed on a few models is that when they've created their conical extrusions, they've not given much of a gap. This is an area likely to fuse because of the overhangs, and it should have good clearances. 
Now, rather than extruding a cone, the better way to do this is to use the revolve command for a consistent gap. There's one other detail, and it seems to be slicer dependent. Some slicers do it well and some do not, and that's knowing where to bridge. A lot of hinges I see have central shafts, and I think it's a good idea because the shaft is going to be strong, but they have bridging on the lowest layer of the pins and also the lowest layer of the corresponding hole. Some slicers don't know what to do with this area and can make a big mess inside. So to avoid this problem, we can give a proper flat bridge area to the bottom of the pin. And for the hole, we can adjust the top to come towards a point and add a small radius just at the very top. These two details will give a better result and avoid any trouble. This is the completed hinge which includes all of these details. I've matched the original hinge shape. I've also added a stop so the lid only opens a little bit beyond 90 degrees. The success of the final product relies on a lot of settings, but one of the most important is cooling. If the parts are small, print more than one at a time and turn all the fans on high and you'll see better results with these types of models. Extrusion calibration is also very important and using high quality filament will also help by having more consistent extrusion. So how does this model print and does it all print free or at least does it free up off the build plate? The answer is yes it does. I printed the models in several different filament types including PETG or PETG and they all free up directly off the build plate. All that's left is to mount the new hinges and see how they work. Before I do that, if you're looking for this model to print yourself, check it out on my Patreon page and consider becoming a patron to help support the channel. Thanks again to all my patrons and a special thanks also to my newest patrons, Sam Bartos, Dave Ballard, Nate Williams, Jordan Newman, T Pond, and Joshua Hamby. After having a closer look, I thought it might be better with a spacer because the lid is inset just a little bit, so I've also printed these spacers. And it's working and it is back in action, but it does squeak a little bit. So I've changed out the hinges for the PETG versions and it's much better. All that's left to do is find something to load into it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell to know when a new video drops. Take care and we'll see you on the next one.